Hi everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video. Now I've got a smile on my face because this is going to touch on a topic that is often argued on those Facebook groups, on YouTube videos and what you can and can't do with a feed-in tariff registered solar PV system. Now I see a lot of people saying that you can't alter them, you can't extend them, leave them where they are, don't do anything and just hope that they never break down because as soon as you alter that system you lose your feeding tariff. And admittedly, this was my view a few years ago, but it's wrong. You can alter it, you can repair it, and you can extend it. And that's what we're gonna get into in this video. So let's jump in. So before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to explain how my view was enlightened in this because ultimately none of us know everything. And what I've got in my hand here is an email that I got in 2023 uh, from Ofgem because we had an installation where the customer had an original feeding tariff registered solar PV system that had been installed on a roof that was really need replacing. And so it came to the point where the roof started leaking and they needed to have a re-roof done, but they wanted the panels changing and putting in roof. Now, in my initial thoughts of that were, oh, you can't really do it because you've got a feeding tariff rigid system. We need to put all those panels back on the roof using exactly the same fixing system in the same location because that is what your MCS certificate and all of your design documentation say. Now, the customer, to their credit, pushed me and pushed me on it, but actually it made me second guess myself. So then I reached out to Ofgem, who are the ones that are overseeing all of this. A lot of the time there's a misconception that it is all to do with your energy provider. And don't get me wrong, they are the ones that unlock that money for you, but Ofgem are the ones that tell them what to do. So I firstly went to EDF in this case and said, look, if I want to put a system in that is 405 kilowatts because that is they are the panels that we can get hold of that are closest match the total output for that site, then can I do it? And the response I got was, I don't think you can, from EDF. And so I went back to the customer and they said, well, that's ridiculous, you should be able to do it. And I agree, I think you should be able to change something that you have on your roof. It can't stay the same for the 25 years. Things change, new, new people take ownership of the property. And so it should be able to change. And so we did some more digging. And the reason that the customers wanted to change this was they were getting a brand new roof. It was gonna be a darker tile. They were an in-roof, all black system to really make the most of the aesthetics of the buildings. It was a lovely building. And they wanted to get rid of the blue panels. So we were looking at the Viridian 405 watt panels, 10 of those, just over four kilowatts of generation. However, they had four kilowatts of generation spread across the, the building with 16 250 watt panels. So we were trying to get to that four kilowatt peak, but we couldn't find a, a way to do it using other panels. We had to use these Viridian ones and they were 405 watts. So we're already onto a bit of a loser there with what we do. So we could have dropped one panel down and gone underneath that, that four kilowatt, but it seemed very strange for 50 watts to try and do that when we're only exceeding it by 50 watts. Now, we could have just done it and not told anybody that that's one option, but that wouldn't be the correct option. We went to Ofgem after finding out that, that information from EDF and it was a fairly lengthy email, but the bit that is the most important, I'll read to you right now. Where an installation is extended, it will only be able to receive fit payments in respect of the electricity produced by the originally accredited capacity. 
So capacity is the key word there, not system. No FIT payments, either generation or export, can be received in respect of any additional capacity not accredited as an extension. A process which is unavailable to extensions commissioned after 15th of January 2016. So basically, that was when the feeding tariff stopped. Where both the original installation and the additional capacity share the same generation and slash or export meters, the, meeting re the meter readings have to be prorated to achieve this. The installation will keep its existing feeding tariff regardless of any changes in capacity. So thanks very much for, for Rory for blowing that all open for us. There's more to this email, but it's really a lot of jargon. That is the key part of what he said. And that to me blew this thing wide open because that there explains that, yes, you can extend the system. No, you will not lose your feeding tariff, but your generation meter readings will be rated for the capacity that you originally had. Now, I don't know the calculation that they make. And in a way, it doesn't necessarily matter because this is what Ofgem are telling them are the rules around the feeding tariff. Yes, it is easy, just easier just to leave the feeding tariff, don't rock the boat. But in this scenario, it wasn't an option because we had to change the system. And that is the same. If you've got a system where you're having um, a lot of panels replaced because they got damaged or you want to replace them, you can replace them but you might have to do a bit of wrangling with your energy provider to convince them of that. So if you need this email, I'll remove any sensitive information, uh, which there isn't really any, and you can have this as almost like a, a written confirmation from Ofgem, signed off by Ofgem as to what the rules are. So if you come across any problems with that, drop a comment, link up privately somehow, or I'll put my email address in there. Let me know and I can forward you this email and you can take this to the feeding tariff provider because these systems, should be allowed to be extended. Homes have changed how their, how their energy is being used. We should be able to adapt to these systems, but it is also very fair that you shouldn't be able to get paid more than what you originally signed up to in that, in that feeding tariff contract. There will be a point where all those contracts expire after the full 20 or 25 year term, depending on when you signed up. But in the, at the minute where we've still got a lot of properties with kind of 10 years left, then it seems sensical to try and get an idea as to what you can do and what you can't do with this. And that little excerpt there, really, the, the last sentence of that really hammers home. The installation will keep its existing tariff rate regardless of any changes in capacity. Add capacity, don't lose your, your feeding tariff rate, and that um, you can make additions and extensions to that system. It maybe adds a bit more work for your feeding tariff provider to, to start calculating that, but ultimately it is a benefit to you because you're able to generate more power from that system um, without losing that feeding tariff. So yeah, hopefully that's answered that question because that's been something that did kind of open my eyes in 2023 when I was making these inquiries. So yeah, reach out if you want this uh, email and I will be more than happy to send it out. Thanks very much for watching. Leave any comments, questions, and all of that jazz in the comments. Share around. Let's get the word out there about this. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from, hear from you all and see what you think. Thanks very much.